Hey, done it. How you doing? Even hey hey. Dave Cameron, and I saw the name Dave Cameron, I thought it was David Cameron. Well, ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and I uh, want to wish you a wonderful evening. And I uh, want to thank you for, for coming on to the, the late one with myself and, um, and other persons who will be joining us later. Um, but first of all, let me know if you can hear me very clearly. And if you can, if it is very clear that um, um, it is good music to thy air and stuff like that. Hey, Donnet, how are you doing? I will say hi to Andrew. Um, you know, tonight I want to talk about, um, uh, what should I say? I want to keep the spotlight on the wall thing which is happening in London in regards to the the wall knife crime and the wall um hotspot in regards to uh the killings which are happening um out there and so i said i want to keep i want to keep that spotlight keep the keep the light on it as much as possible you know as much as so you see when you when you when the light is shined the darkness is um disappears sometimes as they say and uh and I want to make sure, and and at all, all times, as I as I say, I want to make sure at all times that um, one keep things into perspective uh, as much as possible. Um, in my <clears throat> my my discussion the other night, last night, I I, I spoke about something which is called uh, subliminal messages, and and the fact that one has got to be careful that one is not just spewing a particular narrative, um, which is only one track, one sided but actually to give the other side of the coin. And um, the other side of the coin, which I, which I mentioned earlier, was the, the side which, um, saying hi to people on Instagram, is a side that also says that not all um, young people are bad, not all young people are disobedient, not all young people have knives, not all young people have guns, um, that young people also are doing fantastic and doing well uh, as much as possible. Yeah. So I want to make that also very clear uh, as much as possible. Um, i like you as well, well to, to do share, share this video, um, you know, uh, share this video to um, your, your, your friends and your, your foe and, uh, and especially mothers, especially mothers, especially um, single mothers, especially well, people generally, parents, especially parents, you know. Um, there's a level of uh, 
what's the word I should say, a level of despair in um, the, the black communities and those who are affected. Somebody said to me today that uh, they spoke to two white young boys and say, what do they fear about London? And they say, fear of being, getting shot um, and, being, uh, and, and being in the wrong place at the wrong, wrong time. You know, that's a, that's a reality which is out there. That's something we cannot dismiss. It, it, it is a fact and it is something which is out there. So um, I just want to, to, to deal with, with it. Uh, but as you can hear and as you can hear what the Prime Minister said, um, not the Commission of Police, the Commission of Police is saying that there's going to be uh, a lot more police over the weekend around London, especially in the hotspot areas in order to somewhat counteract and to make sure that there's no more killing as much as possible to somewhat um, deal with those particular areas. There have been different um, interviews with the Commission of Police, um, with the mayor as well. The mayor has called for a summit uh, sometime next week with MPs and the Home Secretary as well. And I'm sure, I'm sure he, he has in mind as well community leaders, those who are on the forefront. And when I mention those on the forefront, I'm actually tonight... Because I'm looking at the solutions, and uh, the other night I mentioned solutions about um, one of the ways how these things can be counteract like now, and it is uh, neighborhood watch. I spoke about neighborhood watch, which is something very simple, it, it seems to be, but it is a way how um, one can actually take back your street, and a way how you can actually work in strategizing with the police as well, and giving information, and information sharing, or whatever like that in order to make your community, your street, your neighborhood, your domain, your kingdom, your castle, your city to be safe as much as possible. And what that does as well, it's actually working with um, people and working with um, your neighbors in order to get to know each other and somewhat you can be a level of responsibility for each other where you become your brother's keepers and in making it very straight up you become your sister's keepers as well you become your neighbor's keepers as much as possible um there was a a teenager who was stabbed the other night and um i understand that uh um, someone has been charged with the murder of an 18 year old man stabbed to death in an east london street that was israel Ogonsola. Um, he was stabbed to death in Hackney on Wednesday, <coughs> and um, the, 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 someone has been charged for that. Um, yes, uh, Sophia, hi, good evening, how are you? But tonight, specifically, what, what I want to do, as a matter of fact, I, I, should, I, should, I should really recap, because uh, one, has, one has got to be careful that one don't lose sight of all the particular issues which are happening out there in the world, you know? Um, I want you know, uh, I have to give condolences as well as when people pass away, you know. Um, two killers of vandals drive into a German crowd um, in Canada, I believe. There were, uh, I think it was 14, uh, a Canadian junior hockey team bus crash kills 14 uh, persons. Uh, condolences to them as well. Um, a teenager charged over, okay, they had the stabbing. Uh, the, the whole thing with Brexit that is still going on and Russian... Uh, the two persons, the father and the daughter, who was recently um, poisoned with the nerve gas, Novajak, um, they are doing getting better. The daughter is getting better, and the father is now getting better as well. So, yeah, so we're going to see what comes out of that. It's going to be very interesting days. Is it going to be eggs on the government face with Boris Johnson um, going out? The, German, the, 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 the Russians are now saying they want to have some answers as to regarding what is this, what has happened. Um, because they say, if we do this thing, we knock them out right away. That's what the Russians say. We don't play. And if we wanted to kill the person, we would have done that. So anyhow, what's going to happen to that? That is something else. But tonight specifically, and, and the topic which I, I, I put out there is, what organizations are out there supporting our, our young black men and making a difference? Um, I call it solution two. Solution one was looking at the neighborhood watch. And what I said is that tonight I will be commenting on a few organizations who are out there doing positive stuff, which the mainstream media uh, won't be normally highlighting. But, you know, you have heard me said many times that we create the mainstream based on our focus. Um, 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 uh, what, what do you say, Bianca? Uh, a 30-year-old man was charged on suspicion for shooting Tanisha. Oh, there we go again. Uh, uh, just just told by 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 um, Bianca that a 30 year old man was also charged on suspicion for shooting Tanisha. So you know we we're getting some somewhere there. Trey, how are you, buddy, over there? Um, um, 
as to barbershop how are you uh, my topic tonight is just looking at some organizations which are out there doing it there's over 20 ladies and gentlemen and uh, that's a part of a solution that we know uh, who is doing things who people can go to i might not be able to get into the depths of them because each one has a different angle and i might not be able to divulge too much of their inner working but I, it's more listing them tonight it's more a, a quick one tonight listing the organization and i'll be posting them because these are organizations which are out there some have been in existence for a while it is fortunate that i'm in a group um, with different persons and I'm grateful to be able to to be in, in, in this group and just listen and watching what persons are saying and uh, th these are guys who are on the front line these are guys who are on the front line doing things for years in the UK you know and uh, and I made up my mind that I want to, as much as possible, do a lot of um, collaboration with the different groups which are out there, using my platform as a vehicle for good, which is, well, it's always for good, ladies and gentlemen, or else I'm going to be rapping, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, but really just using the platform I have uh, as, uh, as a vehicle, uh, you know, because a lot of things what people are saying, hey, Philip Maskell, how are you doing over there in uh, Jamaica or 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 Canada or USA because one can't keep their eyes as to exactly where you are, Mr. Maskell. You could be drinking somewhere in a pub in Jamaica or somewhere in Canada. Humphrey Sutherland, how are you doing? Good. Uh, Bianca Granchi of a tune which is me ready, me ready. Uh, we need to share that tune sometime, Bianca. We need to, you need to give me a, um, a, a radio of edit <laughs> so I can actually play because I love that tune so much, you know. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of organizations which are out there doing good, you know, and uh, and you'll be surprised. Um, um, you'll be surprised of the wealth of knowledge and wealth of things which are doing. And one of the things that they lack most time is um, funding, they lack resource, and also they lack the exposure because the media tend not to want to zero in sometime on these organizations. They will zero in on things which are um, negative or things which are do happening. It's still happening, uh, but more zeroing on the other thing. Uh, Lorna Foster, good evening. Um, all the way from Jamaica, bless up. Give my regards to Jamaica. Don't drink off all the rum. Don't drink off or eat off all the ackee and sawfish. And don't buy up all the lands out there. We need to save some. Just block it from the Chinese them in the meantime. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so uh, without further ado, I just want to... Uh, and, and guys, I've, I've, I've got a, a list now. And uh, it, it would be great if you also know of some of them as well um, that you can also talk about and share if you don't hear me mention that. Okay, now, uh, they always say in Jamaica, there's a saying, uh, one, one cocoa, full basket, yeah? Good evening, Bianca. Hey, Stephen, good evening, how are you? Um, for those who are coming in, what I'd like you to do is to share this because I, I want people to hear this as much as possible. This is giving information, uh, quality information as much as possible. And one of the things that I want to do, all the people that I've listed here, all the organizations which I've listed here, I also aiming for somehow to get someone as a, um, someone from the organization, on from rep, to come on and to do a, a, a Facebook Live as well. Okay, I want them to come on and to do a Facebook Live. So I'll be looking also for um, these these different um, persons from these different organizations to come on and do a Facebook Live because there's a listen, guys. There's a wealth of information out there. There's a wealth of information that can support um, young boys, young girls out there, mentoring programs. A wealth of it out there. And as well, you know, someone mentioned something a while ago that there's a, and this is also one I'm put out there. There's an 18-year-old man who is about to be released from prison and uh, and there's no sort of support for him. And I think the mother is worried that he may get caught up in some beef with uh, different persons who were, you know, before he went to prison or whatever like that, you know. So uh, it, the question is, uh, uh, do you know of organization that does that, like uh, support that? Because I believe very strongly as well that it, it, it is important that the community looks after itself. While one is waiting for the government, while one is waiting for the mayor, while one is waiting for more police to come on board, there are things that one can do immediately and now. Forever Coldplay, Wally Shark, Jamaica Home, hey Paulie, how are you? All the way in Jamaica on Instagram land. You know, please share this video, tell people about it as much as possible. I'll be giving out a lot of information of organizations 
which are in existence and which have been in existence and which have been doing things as much as possible. And what they're actually doing now is, is strategizing and working together to have a, a cohesive, strategic, collaborative force that can actually deal with these things, that mothers can actually send their children to, that parents can send their children to, people who are passionate, people who are doing these things off their own back, with their own resources, because they care, right? And they've been saying these things for years, you know? So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to be a part of a solution. Will you also be a part of a solution? And I'm making an appeal now, I'm going to appeal then, because I'm actually going to be having an, a, a forum, a summit as well, which I'm organizing with my church. Well, when I say organizing with my church, it's not going to be a church-led, it is just that we're using the venue of my church in South London, and it's going to be called Solution Oriented Summit. Yeah? Solution Oriented Summit. S-O-S. -S. And this was something which was thought about from December. You know? And it's got the timing is right now. So I want to do it in May. Now, I'm looking for a couple of persons as well to come on board. I'm looking for someone actually to help me actually with this strategy. Because I want to build up this dossier of this information, especially this directory. So if people out there wanting to help... And wanted to take part in the whole process, inbox me or whatever like that. Looking for people to come on board and to assist me with this process, okay? One, one cocoa full basket. The first organization I want to talk about is at the top of my list here now. And they are not in order of preference or order of importance. They are just listed. Um, 100 Black Men of London, right? Website www.100bml. Registered charity. Uh, and it's there. It's about education development, uplifting of our youths and the wider community. This is an organization that I've heard about and which has been going on for years. I think it's about maybe 17 years or so. And they have lots of uh, mentoring program, right? They, I'm actually, while I'm, while I'm mentioning them, I will just post in the link at the same time, okay? So that you can actually see it for yourself. They have been around for a while, mentoring, doing work with kids as much as possible, you know, as it says, they do a lot of educational programs, uh, development programs, you know, uplifting for youth, the wider community. And they have these breakout sessions as well where they got these ways where they can actually engage with young men. And they have some uh, forums sometimes and some, some, some um, discussion forum whereby the mothers are not allowed, but the boys need to come with the man. And that even if the father is not around, but they are supported with a man or something like that, you know, because it is about men strengthening men, boys being strengthened by men as well. That is one of the organization, 100 Black Men, which is which is out there and it is doing fantastic work. Um, your uh, gentleman by the name of Paul Lawrence is one of the key factors about it. And about us, what, what they say about us is this. And you can check it out there now. You can check it out there now. It said 100 Black Men of London. Um, is a community-based charity led by black men delivering programs and activities focused on mentoring, education, health and wellness, economic empowerment and leadership. We are a chapter of the 100 Black Men International Incorporation, an organization first created in New York in 1963, created by a group of concerned African-American men determined to bring about positive change in their local community. Ladies and gentlemen, so that's what it's about bringing about positive change in their local community. So it's bringing about change as well in our community as much as possible. Um, Burma and Brown, I've just stated it. It's there. Every, everyone that I've, I state, I'm going to post a link. I just posted the link right there. And I'll post the link same again later. But the link is right there now, which I just posted, where you can actually tap into it and you can actually share to someone who maybe is uh, uh, worried and who maybe want a way how they can actually tap into um, um, young people or so. So they've got the different programs and they say, get involved. You can get involved as well. Join us as a member or a volunteer and give back to your community. You'll also develop invaluable skills and experience like leadership, mentoring, presentation skill, project management, and more. Contact us. Members and volunteers are all positive, professional, and passionate, and they're time freely in service of our community. Right. There's lots of information. Right. Ladies and gentlemen. So really tap into 100 black men. And uh, my plan is to have a representative from 100 black men to come onto the program. And we can have a one to one as well as different guests in order to expose 
um, fantastic work which has been doing by organizations out there that we can tap into. I say it's time that we do it. You know, it's time that we create our own media space. You know, I say the mainstream is the mainstream. You know, um, the news is the news whereby you make it your news, where you focus into. You know, I know a few people actually come onto this program um, simply to get the update or the latest thing because they believe that I'll be focusing on it. So they trust my judgment as to what I believe is what is more important as much as possible. So I try to give a, an overview to a certain, and I try to be as objective as possible um, amidst my political affiliation and political ideology. I still at the same time believe in strategic um, empowering and strategic engaging as much as possible. And I'll get engaged with anyone from any political parties, from any sphere of interest or whatever like that. Okay? So, Black Andre Black Men is the first one which I tapped into. The second one is the Amos Bursary. And the website is amosbursary.org.uk. Um, I'll post this as well. It has a charity number addressing the underrepresentation in established higher education institutions and professions of young British men of African and Caribbean descent. Okay, and I will post that now in, in, in the live which, which I'm doing. Let me see if I can find it and just post it. So you can actually, while we are talking, you can actually go on to there and you can actually check it out for yourself. There it is. And that is it. The amosbursary.org.uk. Um, let me see. Yep, that's correct. Amosbursary.co.uk, right? .org.uk, realizing the ambitions of young men, right? Realizing the ambitions of young men. And you can see a video there. They're looking for applications as well. They're saying, um, we attract, develop, mentor, and sponsor the next generation of ambitious young men from schools and sixth form colleges in London. They participate in intensive programs for personal and professional development and are given the tools and techniques to make informed choices about the future's professions. They work closely with organizations to provide students with the opportunities and experience to ensure they are work ready and universities to provide scholarships to those in need. The students learn how to be flexible in their thinking and approach to work and acquire the best social people skills to assess professional careers we create positive role models or future leaders in their lives and within society. Okay? So there you are right there now. You've got the Amos Bursary, which is an organization which is out there just like Andre Black Men, who are there to actually empower um, young people as much as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome tonight to The Late One with Silburn. And my topic today is simply about organizations that are out there supporting young black men. So I'm moving away from the narrative of the, the, the negative sad news, but to say how we can empower ourselves, how we can actually work as a community, strengthening, empowering with the tools and the resources which are already in existence. And that is why sometimes when someone come to me and say, Silver, I've got this idea, I want to develop this thing, blah, 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 especially from a community level. All they say, aim not to reinvent the wheel. First check to see if something is out there already in existence and partner with them, join with them, unless you're of a different angle, of a different um, USP or a different angle that you're working with. But I always say, aim to try to work together with existing organization. Aim to collaborate, you know. Uh, when I started the, the Silburn Show in 2015, 16, 17, 18, 20, it's three years now, um, it is, was a, a reason because I, I believe that a lot of people were actually crying out to BBC, crying out to IT, and crying out to ITV to, to give them an opportunity to, um, to showcase and to do things for, um, for themselves. I call my show a display of your splendor, inspirational, motivational, educational, entertaining. Then I create all the different angles of it. And of course I'm promoting it. Of course I'm pushing it. Of course I've got an agenda. I've got an agenda to build a massive network. I've got an agenda whereby we can give the information that we want to give. Because the news media 
you can't blame them. And I don't wrong blues me, dude. I'm in the news business as well. Is that they are taking things out from their particular framework. You know, as you know, and as I've said before, the 78 year old man who killed the burglar lived just around the corner from me. I'm part of the neighborhood watch team where I lead the neighborhood watch um, street with another person. And, uh, the press have been on it, They're knocking on the doors, blah, blah. Sometimes you wonder how to find your address. And they say, can you contact us? Blah, blah, blah. Ray, ray, ray. And all those sort of things. But then after all the information that they give, I then do my live. I then give it from a different perspective and give it to you raw, undiluted. And that is something which is very important that we have. So we create our mainstream. You know, the revolution shall be streamed, as they said. And when the word revolution... Yeah, revolution comes in all different formats. One has got to revolutionize how one thinks, the ideology, the thinking, the mental process as much as possible. We can do it. You know, yes, Churchill, we shall not overcome. We, we, we will overcome. We, we, we shall not surrender. Next one, three. See, there's about 21. I'm going to have three. So I might not be able to even finish all of them tonight. Um, and I won't be doing them justice ladies and gentlemen, by all the information about them, because I'm learning about a few of them today, you know? Um, so the next one is, ladies and gentlemen, it is generating genius, right? Generating genius, charitable numbers, supports talented young people to realize their potential, right? You see, one of the things that you're hearing about all these different organizations is something which is powerful. And I like it. What it's saying is realizing their potential. Yeah? Realizing their potential, breaking through, getting to know who you are. Yeah? Generating genius supports, talented young people from disadvantaged backgrounds to realize their potential in STEM, science, technology, engineer, and maths. Through our, or through their aspirational program of science leadership, academic, you know, intervention and industrial opportunities for students, we help level the playing field and put disadvantaged young people in the running for places at the UK's most selective universities. All right? We are not in a level playing field. It is not like football, whereby you got a crowd of witness and you can see the level playing field and you can actually see who's playing, whether white, blue, whatever like that. You can actually see them actually playing and you know where somebody make a wrong move because there's a level of accountability. There's a level of transparency. But in the world that we live now, it is not transparent. It is not level. So that is why you have organizations that come in seeking to level the playing field. Right. So they got Junior Genius, you know, is a start of a four year program of continuous support aimed at helping students secure a place to study a STEM subject. A top university comprises of activities that inspire and nurture students interest in STEM with the aim of enabling them. Right. And um, they say application now closed. But that's the program. And if you check out their website, you will always see an opportunity whereby you can give your support because that is something sometimes which is lacking, I believe, at many times, you know, and I use this example, I use example, very straight example. And this is it. If a community center is being closed down in your area and it's going to affect a lot of people in that area, and especially if it is from a, 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 a community estate or whatever like that, a, a neighborhood estate. Um, and I, I always say that while the push and while the lobbying is waiting for the government to do something which they may not do in this austerity time, always say that uh, the neighborhood can somewhat pull together. And it's the reason why I mentioned about Neighborhood Watch. Pull together somehow, collect £10 a week or £10 a month or whatever like that, and take control of those community centers collectively. Right? And in that way, one can actually make it happen. So therefore, just like with these different organizations... What I would say as well is to look at them, see which one resonates with yourself, and as much as possible, give them your support, right? Maybe a standing order or so. I'm not, I'm not endorsing like any particular one or so, but whichever one, you look into it for yourself and then see how you can actually support them. Number four is the Goodwin Lawson Foundation. 
And this one is very specific to what is happening now as its aim is to reduce gun and knife crime. Gun and knife crime presently is the epidemic, right? I, I think the commissioner of police said it is not an epidemic. Um, what is happening now? It, it is not. It, it is not a crisis. You know, I think that is how she she used those words or whatever like that. Many people take it as that she's not actually being real, but that is what she says. Maybe she sees epidemic from a different angle, or it is not a crisis or so. And of course, it may be an indictment upon her watch if it is deemed to say that she's presiding over an epidemic. It's uh, maybe an indictment as well upon Sadi Khan if he's also presiding over an epidemic. And therefore, in, in a way, they might not want to use those words of um, presiding over an epidemic. Uh, the government might not want to say they're presiding over an epidemic. Now, I just put up the, num the, the, the one for the Gundwin Foundation um, the website didn't uh, come up, but you can just follow that one there. That's that's another organization there, which is out there, the Goodwin Foundation. Um, the next one as well, which I will tap into is, and this is interesting, <laughs> the Sickle Cell Society. You might be wondering what the Sickle Cell, Sickle Cell Society has to do with all of this. But if you are aware of Sickle Cell, Sickle Cell tend to operate a lot with melanated persons. Um especially in the black community as well. Sickle cell tend to be uh, something which of a nation. I know a few people who are suffering with sickle cell and what they talk about, the, the whole way how sickle cell work. And therefore, if there's support for sickle cell society, it also impacts on the big body. There's a massive body and the body is the community. You see, everyone looks after their community. Asians look after their community. The Irish look after their community. South Africans or Africans look after their community. They resonate first with their community, the Jews with their community, the Asians with their community. So therefore, it's important that one looks after your own community. That doesn't mean to say you're isolating other communities, but you've got to be strong. Because guess what? You've got to be strong first in who you are as an individual, I say. You've got to be strong and knowledgeable of who you are as a person. I don't know if you agree with me or not, but you've got to know yourself. You've got to know your identity first before you can actually be an effective um, value, uh, in a, 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 a chain is as strong as its weakest link, as its link, right? So therefore, it is very important that you also, we also, are strong individually, and then you can contribute to the, the group consensus collectively as well, as much as possible. So, so the Sickle Cell Society supports and represents people affected by sickle cell disease to improve their overall quality of life. And if you look at the, the, the website, what you see is mostly um, black persons on the website as much as possible, because that is where a lot of the, the focus is on. Um, so that is an organization, and, and it says this can only be achieved. The Sickle Cell Society believes that individuals with sickle cell disease have the right to quality care. This can only be achieved if funding is made available to educate health, carers, and other professionals about the condition. The society aims to provide this so that society does not discriminate between the types of sickle cell disorders or the ethnic groups concerned. Right? So therefore, that's another one, the, the, the sickle cell society, um, which, which, which is good. The next one now is, and this one you will, you will all know about, which is the Stephen Lawrence Charitable Trust. Yes, that is in existence. And if you have heard the news recently, um, Stephen Lawrence's mother, um, Doreen, um, she has decided and she has asked the police now to close the investigation, shut it down now. I think she's saying she's tired. I don't know if it was she's saying. Uh, two persons were arrested um, and charged for, for Stephen Lawrence's death. Um, and she's 25 years now or so. Um, I think I came to this country the year before it happened. I think I lived not far at that time from where it happened at the same time. But she's saying now is a time to actually, you know, shut it down, you know, close it down now um, as much as possible, um, you know. And, and I think she also have commented a lot as well in regards to the knife crime because it feels like... Um, 
uh, after the back first inquiry and everything like that, she believes that sometimes things are not happening as it should be. But the sickle cells, but the Stephen Lawrence um, um, trust uh, about us, I'll just read quickly about us. It, I just posted it as well. Everything that I'm talking about, I'm going to post a link as well that you can actually tap into. And uh, and if I can say what it is, I'll just do in a brief about the Stephen Lawrence um, program. Let me see. And I think, yeah, yeah what it says, a lot has changed since Stephen Lawrence's murder in a racist attack in 1993, but some things have stayed the same. Too many young people still struggle to succeed because they are disadvantaged by, let me see if I can make this bigger, they are disadvantaged uh, by factors beyond their control, factors such as where they are born, the school they go to, or discrimination they may face. But we don't accept that your background should limit what you can achieve. We believe that every young person, regardless of their background, should have the opportunity and support to flourish in a society that treats them with fairness and respect. That's why we work with young people aged 13 to 30 to broaden their view of what's possible. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the late one with Silburn. What I'm doing is uh, highlighting um, organizations which are out there, which um, are there as a resource that um, we can tap into, that people can tap into. At this time, especially regarding the knife crime and the gun crime and the recent spate of killing in London, but showing that there are tools, there are organizations out there which are their position that can help. And um, what they need is impetus, uh, funding and also support as much as possible. They need volunteers in these different organizations. I encourage each person to actually look at all the links that I'm putting on. And by looking at those links as well is to somewhat decide which one you want to jump behind, right? And he said, that's why we work with young people aged 13 to 30. The Trust has a purpose-built center in South London. I've been there before and delivers innovative and impactful programs that transform the lives of young people and achieve real social change. SLCT achieves the vision by working towards six objectives. And I will say these six objectives and go on to the next one. To deliver the Stephen Lawrence Billing Futures Program supporting aspiring architects and young people wishing to pursue careers in the building environment. To deliver all age community programs with emphasis on offering support for hard to reach citizens. To deliver innovative employment and enterprise program to young people aged 13 to 30 to grow our social enterprise activity in order to be a highly effective social business to maximize the use of a stephen lawrence center to continue to grow our voice of transformation work in pursuit of achieving social justice for all there ladies and gentlemen another organization which is out there uh, um, at the expense of the life of Stephen Lawrence, but somehow it is there as a tool that one can use, I say, in a way of championing the cause, championing the cause of a fair and just society, ladies and gentlemen. We can actually support these organizations, and that is my appeal on behalf of the different groups here. Next one is Urban Synergy. I like this one because I've been there before. The Urban Synergy Program. That's another classic one which is out there doing fantastic work. They, um, it is not just particularly linked with just boys only, but actually with young people. Um, and I've had one of the guests on my show already, which is... Um, 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 yep, 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 yep. Which Miss Layla Thomas. Uh, she's been on the Silver and Show already on the Red Chair. And fantastic guest. Um, you can actually watch her on the Silburn show. Go on to Silburn TV and you can take her in on, on that discussion there. Um, I've just posted again Urban Synergy for, for you to look at and to see the, the work that they are actually doing. Urban Synergy is an award-winning early intervention monitoring charity that helps hundreds of young people between 11 and 18 years of age to reach their full potential through outcome focus, mentoring program, inspirational seminars, and work experience. I've got a counselor, Barrister, who is online now, um, Stephen Akinsea, who is a mentor. Actually, I met Stephen there when I went to one of their program in Lewisham. Uh, I forgot which, which um, um, academy it took place. So they're doing some fantastic work there, Urban Synergy. 
and they're recruiting for more role models for upcoming seminars, male and female. And they're looking for donation as well. Urban relies on donation to support our program. Please support them. That's all I can say. These are organizations which are out there doing fantastic things in the community. Use them. Utilize them as much as possible. Um, Lorna Foster says, um, I take my hat off to Doreen Lawrence. She's a marvelous individual who stick up for the black society. May God um, continue to richly bless her. Okay. Now, the next one that I, I, will, I will go on to now is the Reach Society. Okay. And ladies and gentlemen, that is number eight. Right? I'm just running through them as much as possible to give you these tools so you can actually look at them and you can utilize them and that you can actually benefit from them and you can share it with your mates and you can share it with everybody to say that, listen, all is not lost. We've got the information. We've got the tools. And this is what we can do as much as possible, ladies and gentlemen. Um, use this information. Share it as much as possible. Share this video as much as possible. Let people know that there, there are wealth of information out there. Now, let me see if I can actually find um, a bit about the, the ReachSociety.com. ReachSociety.com. The social enterprise that encourages, motivates, and inspires black boys and young black men to realize their potential and make viable trans transitions into adult life, right? Reach Society was founded in October 2020, 2010 by a small group of friends who are professional black men who had successfully navigated the social, economical, and emotional challenges to develop from boys to men in the UK. Along the way, they learned the essential strategies needed to develop their potential to become useful contributors to their families, local communities, and wider society. These friends attracted other professional black men to become leading contributors in the rich society by choosing to draw on their diverse personal experiences, educational qualifications, and professional expertise. The leaders of rich society are confident of their ability to encourage, motivate, and inspire boys and young men from their cultural background to make similar transitions. The rich society, ladies and gentlemen, it is there for you as well, um, where you can reach. ReachSociety.com, number eight, which is on the list there. Um, another tool in the hands of the black community that can be used. I always say this all the while, what is in your hands? You know, I always say as well as for my show when I started it, from my dream to the reality to now, what is in your hands? Anybody want to do something else? Well, instead of looking outside, first identify what is in your hands. And that is very powerful. It is very powerful when you first identify what you have in your hands. What you have in your hands now, um, re refers to like the, the, the ones with the five talent and one with the, the, the one or two talent or so. It's a, it's a, it's a biblical um, story, right? So whatever you have, you utilize it or you fa turn it into fashion, as I say. And by doing so, you'll be surprised when you, when you use what you have, you see more coming to you. When you look in your hands, not the physical or the literal hands, but figuratively what you have in your possession, yeah? What is there to your reach, your friends, your source, your access, people or you can, who can be a support to you? You'll be surprised. It's like when you give. Trust me, if you give a lot, if you share advices, and if you give to people, you'll be surprised how more come to you. The more you give, the more come. Because guess what? It's like when you keep back, and this is what I believe as well, and I believe it's very strong. If you only keep things and don't want to share sometimes, it is like it blocks you from growing, from getting more in. Because the more you give, the more you expand. Because what? As you give out, you're making space for more. But if you just keep having and don't share, there's no space for more. It's, uh, you know, does it make sense? It makes sense to me. Because I realize most time when I give, when I share, then I, it's, like it, 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 it's like a well bubbled up at the same time. Sometimes I share with person and I'm talking to them and I get these ideas and I get these words and I, get, and I say, hey, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm driving. I can't write now. Can you write that down? What, what did I say? The sky's the limit. 
No, I didn't say that, man. The sky is the start. People sometimes say the sky is the limit. I say, no, no, let's change that. The sky is the start. That's where I start from, the sky. Many people say the sky is the limit, but I start from the sky where that is the start. My favorite quote, as you all know, and those who follow me, is that don't go with the flow. And I'm not talking the flow, telephone network in Jamaica, where many people sometimes don't want to go with that flow. You know, but don't go to the flow is that you don't follow the natural, the tendency, the, the typical, the traditional. But actually what you do, you create your own rivers, create your own standard, create your own thing, create, make your own creation, paint your picture, put it in a frame and say, that is me. That is me there. I know people are trying to paint me a particular way. I know people are trying to paint the black community a particular way. But guess what? I'm in the black community. I accept that. I recognize that there are issues there and I absorb that. And then what I try to do is then to be a part of the solution because I'm a proud black man. And at the same time, it is very important that I be a part of the solution to say, we can do it. We can overcome. We're a proud people. We are part of this dispensation. End time, start, Timbuktu, everything. We can do it. I have a dream, ladies and gentlemen. We can do it. Okay? Now, moving on now. After the Reach Society, we talk about Manhood Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Silburn Sidiel on The Late One, and my discussion today is about organizations in the UK, which are out there, some for years, that many people don't know, and that the mainstream media, will not know. if the mainstream media tap into these subjects sometimes and these organizations, it is when there's a crisis. And when that crisis takes place, what they do is um, they bring on someone from these organizations and they get maybe one minute or two minutes on the media house and stuff like that. Hence the reason why what I've decided to do as well is to invite each person, right? Invite each person from these organizations. And I've put an invitation out already um, to say, come on to this Facebook Live and let's have a discussion about your organization. So one night... I'll be talking about the research side. Another night, Urban Synergy. Another night, Model Academy. Get them to speak out there so mothers, fathers, parents, children can listen. Aunties, uncles can listen and say, hang on a second, we got to build up the bank. As Dina Coy said, build up the bank and strengthen as much as possible because the tools are there. And then what we've got to do is to actually be a part of the collaborative force. There is hope, ladies and gentlemen. Trust me, as long as I'm alive, there's hope. As long as you're alive, there's hope. It is not despair. Remember this, remember this. Without a doubt, the majority of young black children are fantastic. They're actually doing great. They're actually going to school. They're actually obedient. Yes, they might you know, mess around sometimes with the Xbox and these games and stuff like that. But come on, they're kids. I remember going to school. I remember... Um, after school, playing police and thief. Of course, we never had video games. We never had mobile there because I knew that was that time. And now, you know, so we used to play. Um, we used to play with guns, and these guns were little board guns. We used to just cut up these guns and play with them. Police and thief and stuff. Didn't make us into robbers or killers or whatever like that. No, perish not. Not one of my classmates that I know of is into any gun business or so like that. Never. And yet we used to play these things at primary school. You know what I'm saying? So it is nothing new, but, but the only thing is that parents these days have somewhat have to get engaged with their children as much as possible, right? So when I was shocked when I heard that Tim Westwood is being blamed for black and black violence, I said, come on, give me a break. You know what I'm trying to say? Let's stop blaming other persons and take full responsibility and just work with it. As I said, solution is solution. Solution yesterday, which I talked about the day before, was about Neighborhood Watch. And I repeat that again. Neighborhood Watch is a powerful program. Neighborhood Watch is a powerful program. Let me give you the scenario. And this is a scenario which um, I have a situation where on my street, um, sometimes there's some foxes, you know what I mean? And uh, I know one particular person, when they're coming home in the night, they walk in the middle of the road, you know, because they're afraid of foxes. But then think about this for argument's sake. If you know all your neighbors, and if your children know all your neighbors, whereby you have street parties like what I do every year with my with the street, uh, I'm going to post a picture also to show you where all the neighbors come together. And say, for instance, a young person is walking home. And say, for instance, that young person feel that they're being followed or an adult feel that they're being followed. Wouldn't it be great if they can just mark it? They may have to go 300 yards to their home. 
and that person is behind them. It may not even be. <laughs> sometimes people get paranoid sometimes when somebody's walking behind them. That person could be going about their business. But wouldn't it be great if with a strong neighborhood watch and with a strong knowledge of your neighbors, you can just go into Mr. Blake's home and knock on his door and he will see you and he say, hey, what's up? I think somebody's following me, you know what I mean? Come in. Yeah, sure, come in, man. But you can't do that unless you have a relationship, you know? And so when you look at that there now, you're actually empowering. You're actually strengthening. You're actually building up the bank. And therefore, if each person reach East Street and in a, in a particular zone, even as a hot spot or whatever like that, and then you put up sign that there's a neighborhood watch thing there, blah, blah, blah. And I'm saying this because, as you know, and I've said it before, my neighborhood is the one which is which central in the news now with the 70-year-old man who actually killed the burglar as much as possible. They're coming to rally around it. I've met with the police. We have had neighborhood watch meeting after that, supporting the gentleman as much as possible, you know, making sure that the right information goes out there. You know, we have built up different areas, get high gates that block the alleyways and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So that is one of the, one of the solution. And the other solution, as I said, is getting to know um, your 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 different organization, which which is which is out there. And um, as I can see, the Manhood Academy. And I think I may have to do just ten tonight. Actually, just it's just going to be ten tonight. I can do because it would be un, 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 it would be unfair to rush through the others because I don't want to do a Facebook live too long. People get bored when they see a Facebook live over an hour or so and I want people to actually um, um, tap into it. So if I go on to two more which would be the uh, and this one is the Manhood Academy. Yeah. Manhood Academy. And it's a Manhood Academy for Boys. A multi-award winning urban-centered rites of passage experience. Manhood Academy. I believe they were on the, uh, one of those shows after news uh, recently. The Manhood Academy for Boys is a community-based charity program committed to offering young men between the age of 8 and 12 years, preteens, 13 to 19 years, teens, and 19 to 25 years, life after changing transformational workshop. Right? That's what manhood academy is about it is there there to be used there as a tool in the hands in your hands and of course you see their donate button donate button which is there for persons to actually tap in and to give their support so therefore what i'm actually saying is this you may not be one who is on the front line you may be one who is out there busy working you may be one who do not have the time but that doesn't mean to say you can't be a part of the process. You also may be in a situation where you got your children, your young boys, single parents, or not even single parents. Could be a single father, could be a single mother, could be a double parent as well, but you have struggles. So therefore, what you can do is somehow look at one of these programs and say, listen, let me support one of these programs. Let me send my children to one of these programs at different times to instill something in them with other persons. And ladies and gentlemen, and finally, just for tonight, I will do into the Origins Rites of Passage. That's another program for black boys. You see, some people will say, then why don't they all collaborate together? You know, I don't believe that. I don't believe that everybody needs to collaborate together um, doing the same thing, but I believe that everybody needs to be linked in together somehow. Because everybody somehow have a sort of different angle. I believe the individualistic thing is very important. But I believe also in the cooperative, collective, at the end of the day, eventually. Because, you know, with leaders, leaders sometimes, they have these special qualities, these special features. And the worst thing sometimes is to actually stifle a leader. They get suppressed and their dynamism is missed. Right? And sometimes people say, Oh, why do that when there's one over there? No, they can do it as well. We're in this big world. 
So many people to reach. Everybody have their angle. Everybody have their access. But then at the same time, they can collaborate and strategize together, just like the road CEO is doing. And also with this group, which I'm in, where I'm hearing lots of different persons speaking and stuff like that. Don't maybe agree with everything as well, but I believe in the black element. And the black element, ladies and gentlemen, is what I call finding that common denominator, finding that common ground, finding that common USP that one can work on and grow. Because sometimes we're easily... We we can be easily we, we we can easily dismiss something because we do not agree with it right to it. But I say to you, why dismiss something that you don't know about? Why not engage? Why not appreciate the differences? Appreciating the difference I see is a sign of maturity as much as possible. You know, even political affiliation. You may not agree with my politics, I may not agree with your politics. But at the same time, we can appreciate and have that respect. And that is a sign of maturity. That's what young people are looking for. That's what young people are looking to see, whereby the adults actually work together strategically together as much as possible. That is important. The REACH, the, the, um, the Rites of Passage program. This is what it is. New initiative, right? And let me see if I can um, see it. And of course... You'll have to go on to the site to see what it is because um not seeing much as to what it is, but its origin. You see, origin began around 1999, 2000 as a pilot project after consulting young people and parents that live near to where we are based in South London at a conceptual level. Origin is an African-centered rites of passage program that works with families to raise sons. We see great value in the African proverb. If the young men are not initiated into the village, they will burn it down just to feel its warmth. Wow, that's powerful. If the young men are not initiated into the village, they'll burn it down just to feel its warmth. We deliver an empowering program um, by reviewing, viewing young people as heirs and custodians of a rich cultural heritage. We recognize that awareness and readiness to be confident young men of African descent does not come automatically. So we as men and a community um, take responsibility for developing and delivering the origin and rights of passage program, you know? And therefore, later, that's another program as much as possible. So ladies and gentlemen, I, I run into uh, 10 programs tonight. 10 organizations tonight that one can tap into. There's, there's about, let me tell you how many more that I have, um, which you need to tune in to the next time I come on with more, but tomorrow night, if anything. There's 23, 23 organizations that I have to my disposal, which information's about them, who are doing work with black community. But for tonight, what I've touched on is 10, right? 100 Black Men of London, the Amos Bursary, Generating Genius, the Goodwin Lawson Foundation, the Sickle Cell Society, the Stephen Lawrence Charitable Trust, Urban Synergy, Reach Society, Manhood Academy, and Origin Rights of Passage Program for Black Boys. There's more to come, ladies and gentlemen, much more to come. And what I have, I believe, is just even some of the amount which is out there. But I start the process by being a part of the solution, ladies and gentlemen. Being a part of a solution is crucial. Be the solution is crucial. We can complain. We can abdicate our responsibility. We can talk about others. We can say it's the government. We can say it's the police. We can say it's the mayor. We can say it's the bad man, the good man, that girl, that person. But I believe the start of progress is when each one of us accept responsibility and say, I will and I shall be a part of the solution. If you have to follow my example, follow it. Because it's a good example whereby I only do things. Ladies and gentlemen, I talk and I do. I do and I talk and I talk and I do. That's what I do. Anybody who knows me, as a matter of fact, my mother used to call me action man, right? And, and I just go ahead and focus. People will say different things sometimes. Who cares? Once you know yourself and you've got an identity of who you are, you don't care one jack. You know, let me hear what Stephen Akinsey says. I have been with Urban Synergy for a number of years. My first mentee was 13 when I met him. We recently met up again. It was a joy to see him as a successful 34-year-old 34, 34 man 
mentoring works. And that's the last note I said, what Stephen Akinsai says. He says, I've been with Urban Synergy for a number of years. My first mentee was 13 when I met him. We recently met up. Again, it was a joy to see him as a successful 34-year-old man. Mentoring works. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, my message is this. Be a part of a solution. Don't get caught up with the message sometime that all um, it's all fire and doom out there. It is not. It is not. It is not. Because majority of young black children, for the record, are doing fantastic and doing well. But we've got these bad elements out there who are responsible for these crimes. They need to be taken down. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, they need to. People need to report them. People need to talk. Build that trust with the police. It's a two-way process as much as possible. So without further ado, I want to thank you so much for joining me on The Late One with Silburn. Thank you so much on Instagram land. Um, all the best. I do appreciate you. Um, Maxine Bambury, you're late. You're going to be in the naughty corner for being late. So you're going to stay in the naughty corner and say, I will not be late. I will not be late. <laughs> All the comments. Yeah, I could, you could be in the naughty corner a bit, but uh, you know, you're good. You're good. <laughs> Stephen, um, 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 ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Dorothy, Anita, Annette McKenzie, Carly, Hannigan. Hey, Junior, how are you? Um, see you later, Lorna. Enjoyed the thing in Jamaica. Arlene Clark. And for those, Sonia Bunny, Pauline, Paul Jones, Michael Mason, Bianca as usual, Claudia Mugabe, Lorna Foster, and all of those who, who join in today, please share this video. Tell people about it, about the great things which are happening out there as well. And, um, and finally, before I go, may the Lord bless you and keep you and may his face shine upon you and may he give you peace. Becky Okoye, um, you... Um, it's unfortunate sometimes when I'm leaving, more people are coming in. Um, Becky, uh, um, playing for survival. You can watch it on replay. Um, so have a good night and see you around tomorrow night when I finish the other 13 organizations which I've been talking about as well. Okay? God bless. Bye-bye.